Hello humans, welcome in the less normal channel on the internet. Once again, we'll discover what this video is gonna be about using the randomizer I coded a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, let's hit start. <laughs> That's why this program was a really bad idea. So I have to model something in 3D using this program called Animation Nodes. And as the name says, it's not meant to model 3D geometries, but just to animate them. So if you want to see my almost certain failure, please keep watching. I'm Artificial Marvin and you're watching The Surface. <laughs> As always, let's start researching some references and inspiration, because I have really no idea on how to accomplish this challenge, and even what my final artwork could be. I collected a lot of reference images. In this way, I could understand better what I wanted to accomplish. And most importantly, I could discover if those ideas could be actually realized with the tools at my disposal. After my research, I decided to reproduce as best as I can this render of Josh Pierce that I found on Instagram. To be honest, Hal chose this piece. He said that it had a familiar look. I don't know what this really means. My goal isn't to copy exactly every detail of this reference image, but to take inspiration from it and to produce an image that evokes the mood of the world represented. Okay, let's begin. The first thing I did was to regain confidence with this program, because it was a little rusty. So I did some tests to prove to myself that this challenge was actually doable. After that, I started setting the scene to reproduce as closely as possible the framing of the reference image. Programs like this are usually used in the industry to animate complex system like particle system or other difficult animation that would require ages to be animated by hand. First of all, I started very basic, creating a big plane as the ground. After that, I subdivided the mesh in order to have more quads to play with. This means that I'll have more resolution to work with. The best thing of parametric modeling is that editing is non-destructive, so I can go back every time I want without rebuilding everything from scratch. For example, with the slider, I can completely change the shape of a 3D geometry without having to move manually every single vertex. In the creation of the terrain, I had to choose between different types of randomizing algorithms, and for this task, I chose to use Perlin Noise. Why am I telling you about Perlin Noise? Because I think it has a really cool origin. Perlin Noise is a really cool noise algorithm created in 1983 by Ken Perlin. And it was created specifically to have an organic look. In fact, if you compare the standard uniform noise with the Perlin Noise, you can immediately see its organic structure. Interesting enough, it was especially designed for the VFX industry. And in particular, it was used in Star Trek II and Tron. And for this, Ken Perlin was awarded an Academy Award for Technical Achievement. After the terrain, I recreated the mountains in the background using the same technique, but this time I had to mask the ground in order to deform only specific points of the surface. Then I played a bit with the positioning of the mountains and the rocks details. Then it was time to focus on the water. 
For this, I just needed a plane to intersect the terrain. And it was basically it. The only thing it was missing was the material to recreate the ripples and their effectivity. And so I did it, in the same way I did for the geometry, using procedural noise textures to control the ripples. After the water, it was time to refine the material for the rocks as well. Same exact approach, I just played with the parameters to get the desired look. After taking my time to create a decent illumination for this scene, it was time to finally focus on the main element of this artwork, the big monolith at the center. And that's exactly when all the troubles began. In this moment, I understood why modeling with a program meant to animate instead was a really bad idea. In fact, I couldn't manipulate the geometry to get something even nearly close to the desired shape. So, how did you solve the problem? You would say. Well, obviously, I cheated. I manually created a cube and subtracted a cylinder from it. And then I just mirrored the model, obtaining the circular opening at the center. It's not something I'm particularly proud of, but at least it was the only operation I did outside of animation nodes. And in any case, in my opinion, it is still an acceptable solution, since I kept the parametric approach even with this option. But do you guys think I could really end the challenge at this point and feeling satisfied about this? Obviously not. So, since it was unnecessarily complex and also pointless trying to manipulate the geometry, I decided to take another route. In fact, I thought that since Animation Nodes was really good at displacing lots of objects, I could try to build up the shape I wanted using simple cubes as building blocks. And after a lot of time spent on playing with parameters, I finally got something interesting. During this time, I had a lot of troubles trying to randomize all the surfaces I created. I tried so many times, but I failed like always, and I still don't understand why. In fact, I still believe that my strategy was the correct one. The program was just duplicating the first plane and displacing it in a really weird pattern. So what do you think I did to accomplish my goal? Very good, you learn very quickly. I cheated once again. So since the biggest problem was that the program was using the same transformation for all the meshes while I tried to randomize it, I had to give up with the idea of having a full parametric design. And so I did it. I joined manually all the planes. In this way, Animation Nodes was finally behaving as expected. And I have to say that I kinda like this result, but still, the shame was too much to handle for me. So I decided to continue this war between me and my neurons. And after a long research on the reference guide, I finally found a way to unify multiple objects in a single mesh. At this point, since every component in my scene was completely parametric, I finally could play with the different parameters to my disposal to generate different iterations of this scene. And these are the final result. I have to say that I'm pretty satisfied with this result. Everyone, it's interesting in its own way. What do you think? If you have any comment or suggestion, please write it in the section down below. What kind of bees make milk? Boobies. Mountains aren't just funny, they are hilarious. What do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? An irrelevant. You don't need a parachute to skydive. You need a parachute to skydive twice. If you liked this video, please give me a like, subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Until the next challenge, as always, thank you for watching, bye humans!